Hello Aquarius and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer. This is Jasmine. Let's see if you can see her. <clears throat> She's gotten a little anxious since I moved the office and now every time I unpack a box because this is the only part of my office that's clean right now. Um, <clears throat> but every time I unpack a box, every time I move something around, yeah, she's getting a little anxious. So I had to move another bed in for her. So she's got her little dog couch over there where she can truly stretch out. She's got a space over here. And because I have the heat on because it's cold, um, <clears throat> when she gets hot over here, she goes and lays on her dog couch. And then she warms up that area, I guess, and walks back over here. So she's just feeling a little anxious, a little like displaced I guess and the cat well he's just pissed at me I don't know what to say he's got four beds in here and he's still pissed all right Aquarius this is a reading for the week of March 20th this is a general reading so if it resonates with you that's great and if it doesn't that's okay make sure you check out your sun moon and rising sign because sometimes you'll resonate more with your moon or your rising sign depending on placements in your chart and it can also depend on yeah your reader <clears throat> all right Aquarius so I've been telling y'all that March is a crazy busy month. There's a lot going on. Like it, every time you turn around, there's something else changing astrologically. That this is a really busy month, and it is. But this is also, an, I mean, a continuation of that because it's a busy week. So on the 20th, we have the sun moving into Aries. Uh, it's the first day of spring, the spring vernal equinox, however you want to phrase that. Uh, then we also have the new moon in Aries uh, on the 21st. So there's a lot of new growth. There's a lot of rebirth happening here. It's just a, it's a wonderful time. It really is. Uh, then we have on the 23rd, we have Pluto moving into Aquarius. And that's going to be really interesting because Pluto is going to be in Aquarius from March 23rd until June 11th when he retrogrades back into Capricorn. So when that happens, um, we're, we're during that period, we're going to get to see what it's going to be like for us for the next 20 years with Pluto in Aquarius. Because on in January of 2024, Pluto is going to station in Aquarius direct and he's going to be there until 2044. So, very good. I mean, it's different energy. It's different energy, to say the least. Because we have um, Pluto and Capricorn can be a little, you know what I mean? He sets up a lot of stuff. It's like he sets up the shot, and sometimes Aquarius takes it. So, we'll see what happens. Um, then, on the 25th, we have um, Mars finally leaving Gemini. Mars has been in Gemini since God was a boy. Joking. Mars has been in Gemini since August, and it is time for it to move on. It never stays in a sign this long, and Mars is not, like, the best in Gemini, but it's okay. We've gotten through it. It's time for it to be over, though. Yeah. I will say that the fixed signs are getting a little bit of a break this year. Uh, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. You guys are getting a little bit of a break this year, so it should be a better time. But let's see what happens with Pluto being in Aquarius. Because Pluto has been in my rising sign now for about 16 years. 15, 16 years, something like that. Maybe even 17 years, I don't know. But yeah, I'm kind of like interested to see what happens next. All right, Aquarius, I've been talking long enough, I know. Let's see what we got. Okay. <clears throat> this is interesting. So, we start off with the Ten of Acorns, which is responsibility and dedication. Then we go to the Magician, which is willpower and creation. 
Then we go to the Six of Crystals, which is Synergy and Gratitude. The Four of Feathers, which is Sanctuary and Rest. And the Empress, which is Beauty and Abundance. Love her. But this is also things coming to fruition. It also happens to be the Year of the Rabbit. Just want to point that out. So I kind of am getting a different feel for some of you guys, some of you Aquarians out there, that this has been. <clears throat> I feel like either some of you have moved from this uh, Ten of Acorns responsibility and dedication. You've either moved from it or you are moving from it. I just don't know which ending to put on there, whether it's, you know, currently or it's in the past. But the responsibility and dedication that I feel like they're talking about in this card is that you've been carrying around more than your share or that you have carried around more than your share. Maybe some extra responsibility that wasn't yours. And I don't know if this is in a relationship, a career, in a home, in a I don't know. I mean, I, I, with your community, with your family, I don't know. I mean, and I kind of feel bad because Dr. Seuss has Aquarius rising, and I feel like I've been putting a lot of extra burden on him. <laughs> Gotta check in with him. See about that. But the thing is, I do feel like for you specifically, I feel like a lot of you have either already moved away from this, or you've made a plan, and you are moving away from it. Do you see what I'm saying? The reason why I get that you are definitely moving away from this is because the magician is a reinvention card. The magician is, <coughs> excuse me, a reinvention card where you can create your own reality. Now, you have to do that with willpower because it does take a lot. You can't just say, you know what, really don't want that wall to be there anymore. And then just not do anything about it. You actually have to have a plan. You have to have some willpower to bring forth the action. This is what you're doing here. This is what you're doing in the magician place. Is that you are creating a reality for yourself. You're reinventing yourself. And I love it. There's a little um, infinity sign there. And the great thing is, is that you have all the tools that you need to do that. You have all the tools in your tool belt to do that. The next thing that we have here is the Six of Crystals, which is Synergy and Gratitude. You have something going on where you finally have a good give and take relationship here. I don't know, again, I don't know whether this is with a job or whether this is with a family member, a partner, or a community, or whatever. But you finally have this where it's in like an equal give and take. Now you can be grateful for the help. And you, you know, because you're always wanting to give, you're always wanting to participate. You're like, let me help. Let me do this. Let me do this. But willing to accept it. Uh, yeah. And that's how you got yourself in this place to begin with. <clears throat> you know, but now you're willing to accept the help because this person or people or community or group or whatever is not taking advantage of what they're doing, what you're doing for them. In fact, they're saying, hey, I want to help you back. This could even be your connection to spirit. It, everything has to be a give and take energy. Everything has to have that yin and yang. I mean, it, it reinforces this for me every year when I start planting my garden. It reinforces it for me. The Four of Feathers, Sanctuary, and Rest. Absolutely. You've got to take time for yourself. And by the time you're seeing this video, um, Venus will be in Taurus. And Venus in Taurus is all about self-care. Remember that. This is a great time for you to take that, that opportunity to say, okay, I've been working really hard at reinventing myself. I 
don't have as much of the responsibility anymore. I'm sharing it. I'm spreading it around. We're working through some things. I'm going to take some time for myself. This is a great time for it because when you start doing that, when you start taking time for yourself, you get to this place of really things coming in that you've been asking for. That abundance, that time of just, you're just like, oh my gosh, I didn't know it was going to be this great. Yeah, you didn't. Because I think even though you were manifesting it, even though you were reinventing it, to see a different kind of thing, you didn't think it was possible. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is abundance. This is things coming to fruition. And it's coming in for you. It really is. I love it. Goodness. And it's like you really have just I think that the reason why the abundance comes in is because you do take some time and rest. And <clears throat> it helps you to accept it. It helps you to accept it. There's a little bit of a stubborn streak with you Aquarius. You know I love you. You know I do. I mean, I love me some Aquarius people. And Dr. Seuss, like I said, he has that Aquarius rising. Mm. No stubbornness there. But the thing is, you have to, if you don't take time for yourself, if you don't take time to fill that cup, you, you're constantly just trying to bring it in. And it, it won't work out. But if you take time to rest and take care of yourself, the abundance will come in. Oh, so great. Oh my gosh, this is just so great. Okay, sorry. All right, so we start with the Queen of Pentacles. Mm. Go to the Three of Pentacles. The Ace of Swords. The Queen of Swords. And the Three of Cups. Okay. Okay. So the Queen of Pentacles, I keep hitting my microphone because I'm not used to it being here, but I'm working on that. Sorry. So I hope it's not like doing weird things to the sound. God, I did it again. I hope it's not doing weird things to the sound because this is important and I want to get to it. So the Queen of Pentacles, so freaking awesome. She is just, she's ambitious. She's successful. She's comfortable with who she is, but she's stable. She's grounded. She has, um, she has all this, like, uh, all this stuff coming into her, and she knows she deserves it, right? She knows she earned it. She knows she deserves it. She's worked really hard. She is ambitious. Nothing wrong with that, right? She's comfortable with who she is. She's secure in who she is. Nothing wrong with that, absolutely. But she is stable because she keeps herself grounded. And so she's like, yep, all of this is coming into me because I asked for it. I deserve it. I asked for it, but she's also probably worked her ass off for it too. <clears throat> and the three of pentacles does indicate to me that you are working your butt off. I'm trying not to cuss as much in case on the off chance I get monetized on this channel. <laughs> My other channel is monetized, but not this one. The Three of Pentacles energy is working and, uh, and being acknowledged for your good work. Like being acknowledged and rewarded for your good work. That someone is seeing all the stuff that you're doing, all the effort that you're putting in. And they're, they're recognizing that. And that's so awesome. It's so incredible. Because here you are 
working, you're ambitious, you know you deserve great things, you know you want this to come in, and people are actually recognizing that good work and getting ready to reward you. Okay, you can come through, but don't step on the cards, okay? I know, Aquarius needs to know their stuff though, baby, okay? So I ask you not to step on the cards. I know. You're so cute though. Okay, look. Why don't you just go to your little bed? Look, look, look. Here, here, here. No, it's all right. Look, yeah. It's all right, mouse. I told y'all he's pissed. <clears throat> okay. So you are being recognized and rewarded for your good work. And your hard work. Um... The, this puts you, because you're being rewarded and you're being recognized, this puts you in a place where you're just like, oh my gosh, I am ready to start this up again. Like, I'm ready to, I'm ready for this new beginning. I'm ready to just, like, clear my mind and, and just say, okay, I'm done. I'm done with all this negative stuff. I'm done with all this. I'm going to put my my thoughts, my actions, I'm going to go in this direction. And it's a positive start. It's a really positive, fresh start. It's a great time to do it here in the spring, right? This is a positive and incredible fresh start for you. It really is. The fresh start does come with you being able to see very clearly. I want to point out to some, some things on this Queen of Swords. This new beginning, this fresh start here, part of it is because she, look, she's climbed up to this tower so that she can have a better view, so that she can see everything very clearly. So she can cut through the fog and just be like, all right, now what's going on? Here's the other thing. She's detached emotionally. She's put her heart on the shelf. She's pulled back emotionally. There's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. She's pulled back and she's gone, okay, now I have some hard decisions to make. What do I, what do I want to do? How do I want to proceed? This is someone who is, you know, the Queen of Swords is very professional. She can be a little sharp, but she she's just because she's pulled back emotionally and she's like I'm not tiptoeing around this you don't look good in them pants <laughs> leave it to an Aquarius to say something like that but you know what I'm saying she's seeing the situation clearly because she has gone to the highest place that she can so that she can see the situation clearly and she's looking beyond the fog and it's wonderful because it's bringing her exactly where she wants to be. It's bringing her exactly what she wants because here's the celebration. The Three of Cups is that celebration card. It's knowing that you have your tribe by your side. You have a support group. And this is what I love, love, love about this deck. Look at the Big Dipper. Now, my great-grandmother always said when the Big Dipper is turned over on its side, like in the sky, and it looks like it's pouring out, she's like... You need to hang on to your stuff. You need to hang on to your money. You need to hang on to things of value because that's there's a downturn coming. There's not a downturn coming here. The Big Dipper is right up holding on to all of its bounty, let's say, and moving in a great direction for you. Because this is celebration. This is you celebrating that abundance. This is you like with your support group, with your tribe going, yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted. And why shouldn't you get what you wanted? I think this is just so incredible. I love, love, love that you're reinventing yourself and that you have this like new beginning coming. And that you have all these queens that are helping you out. Empress, queen, queen. And maybe it is like just having um, Venus and Taurus for a little bit. And I know um, <coughs> Venus doesn't rule your sign, but Taurus is a fixed sign. And when something happens to the fixed signs, it, it does trickle down. <coughs> 
It really does. I mean, Saturn's been in Aquarius for the past two and a half years, so you tell me. And now Saturn's finally in Pisces, right? Well, unless you have a lot of Pisces in your sign. But then you should be used to it. Lemon! And if you do have a lot of Pisces in your sign, you've probably already gone through the worst of it to be honest with you. Oh my gosh, Ganesh, infinite abundance, looking good, And the lizard, keeper of dream time. Okay, these are the good ones. Sorry, I <clears throat> I had to use my wonky reading glasses for a few days because I couldn't find them when I was moving my office. It's good times. All right, first advice card uh, from Spirit is Lord Ganesh, Infinite Abundance. Obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. Oh my gosh. I love this. Love it. Okay. Next advice card comes from the animal deck. The lizard. Keeper of dream time. Lizard bridges daily life with subconscious dreaming. Dreams look at the shadow side of the future. Fears, weaknesses, and resistances. Wake up to your dreams. Subtle, psychic, and intuitive messages. Hear what is not said. Intuition helps you break from the past with conscious detachment and even explore new realms. How about that for reinventing yourself, huh? <laughs> Okay, the last advice card is the is from the essential oil deck. It is lemon and the emotional aspects of lemon. It releases guilt, confusion, insecurity, and mental fatigue. Just like the Queen of Swords cuts through. Just wanted to point that out. It instills focus, clarity, alertness, and revitalizing energy. Um, it creates confidence and mental strength to forge through self-judgment and come out on top. It creates focus. The centering thought. I am confident in my capabilities. I create joy as I release the thoughts that weigh me down. And the affirmation. Why is it so easy for me to create joy? And the, cr uh, the chakras are the crown and the solar plexus. And you know... The solar plexus is my favorite chakra. Just wanted to share that with you one more time. Well, I'm excited about this. I'm excited that Aquarius is like reinventing. I can't wait to tell Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Although he'll probably hear it because I've been teaching him how to edit, so... 
thank you so much for joining me today, Aquarius. I really, really appreciate your support on my channel. I just, I really appreciate you. Don't forget to check out your monthly numerology and some of my other shows that I have coming out. And I just, I, as soon as I get time to edit, there'll be more coming out. I promise. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye.